The Fantasy Edge with Richard Seville and Dennis Sosick. Hello and welcome to The Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville, fantasy6pack.net, welcoming you to uh, week four. And as usual, we will bring you uh, the latest news, uh, updates on the Monday Night Game, which we're currently uh, currently early in the fourth quarter. And I think uh, Dallas just scored another touchdown, so they're taking uh, the Eagles out quite easily uh, tonight. Of course, joining me shortly, Dennis Sosick, also of uh, Fantasy6Pack.net. Um, but before we get into all that and uh, the uh, waivers later on, we'd like to pass along uh, our condolences and sympathies to the family of Mike Tagliere, sports uh, fantasy sports writer for Fantasy Pros, a senior writer there. And we, uh, us, we in the industry were really hit hard by the, the news that, uh, well, I, it came to us on Saturday, and uh, and right in the middle of the, the early portion of the football season. Uh, Dennis, uh, yeah, it was uh, quite a blow this uh, week. Yeah, it was uh, pretty devastating, gun wrenching news to hear about tags. Uh, you know, like, I never met the man, but you know, I chatted with him a few times at the Fancy Discord, Fancy Pros Discord channel, and he was uh, more than more than willing to answer all my questions. And you know, gave such in depth analysis that I was very appreciative of what was helping me out. So you know, he was an icon in the fantasy world. Worked his butt off to get where he was, um, and his prime articles were were a definite go-to for me. And he had every player, every game, you go to it, and it was something that uh, uh, was a necessary read every week. Yep, it was uh, definitely required reading. I analyzed every single player in every single game. And uh, you could see it was like, you know, like there's more pages here, like three or four pages uh, at Fantasy Pros every week. But, I mean, if you wanted uh, details of his of his takes on, on, on all the players and every single week, he was right there. But he was also like that. Before he joined Fantasy Pros, he had his own website. And I don't know what he got for it, but he, he uh, I used to go there uh, checking out his, because uh, it was kind of a primer back then, but, but it was far more extensive when he moved to Fantasy Pros. I like you, I never met him. Uh, small exchanges, uh, because both you and I, we do, um, we have sort of like side projects with uh, Fantasy Pros. With uh, ask, They're asking us to do the blurbs here and there, but uh, uh, that's about the only platform that I actually shared with him. And I guess I'm kind of proud of that, that it was actually some of those uh, blurb articles were shared with him. Like he, he would, he would uh, pitch in to uh, help he was uh, really missed. Uh, came as a quite a shock, just a total shock. And there's a GoFundMe. Um, I don't have the exact address, but it's easily searchable on Twitter if you want to contribute to uh, to his family. And that's another thing, Dennis. He was a family man, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thoughts and prayers go out to his wife, Tabby, and the Tex family, along with the Fancy Pros family. The last time I checked, the uh, GoFundMe account it was over three hundred fifty thousand dollars. So. It shows uh, how much he impacted so many lives. And uh, rest in peace, Tags. Uh, God bless, and you'll be missed. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I guess we we can safely say we'll dedicate our podcast to his memory this this week. This this four podcast. And uh, get on with the news. Um, some better news to talk about um, is that uh, Andy Reid was taken to the hospital after the game. Uh, apparently suffering di- uh, dehydration. Um, came out in stable condition. And he's apparently he's back home now. And he'll be back on the field. So, and, and if you were looking for a bit of good news on the human front, there's something there. Yeah, it's good to hear. Um, let's move right along. Uh, Justin Fields, uh, Bears head coach Matt Nagy said, and this is from uh, this is from Roto World here. Bears head coach Matt Nagy said he can't definitely say who he'll start at quarterback in Week Four against Detroit. Of course, uh, the choice is being Justin Fields, Andy Dalton, and Nick Foles. Uh, Dennis, uh, what's your take on the uh, Bears situation here with the quarterback? I think uh, Matt Nagy should be fired. Uh, he had such a uh, basically no game plan for uh, you know for Fields. You know, his first start. So I think it feels they had no chance out there. He got he almost got killed uh, by the Browns defense. I mean, it's good for the Browns. I guess as I'm, I'm a Browns fan, easy W. Mm-hmm. But I really feel bad for uh, Justin Fields. I mean, he got. He got wobbed, uh, nine sacks, four and a half by Miles Garrett. Um, you know, their offense was basically just offensive. I mean, it was horrible. He had an average of 0.78 seconds to throw the ball. And it seems like the offense keeps getting worse under Nagy. And, uh, he probably, well, he should be, 
uh, the first coach fired this year. Yeah, uh, pretty bad uh, start to the season. I mean, they had they had one win, but I mean, they're playing Detroit. What's your thoughts on Andy Dalton or uh, Nick Foles? Because Andy Dalton, to be fair, he hasn't really been that effective. No, he hasn't. That's probably more to do with coaching than to do with Andy Dalton. But yeah, I, I see. I think he has to keep Fields out there, even though Fields are pretty bad, and uh, he didn't. Uh, he didn't do him any favors either, but I think they have to give him another shot. Yeah, I, I think they want him to use his legs. You know? right, they should have. Well, they didn't game point it that way, which is part of the problem. But that is, I mean, he had zero. They moved him zero times outside the pocket. Um, he didn't develop any plays for him to use his legs, and uh, he needed it with the Browns attack him so, uh, yeah, so uh, aggressively. In two quarterback leads, what do we do with them? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I think you have to hold on for the for the upside and the potential. Uh, you don't want to lose out if he if he starts clicking for him, which I think it will. Just you know, it was a bad bad experience to start the year, but start his career. But I think he'll be fine. Okay. Uh, AJ Brown, uh, ESPN's Adam Schefter reports AJ Brown is expected to be considered week to week strain hamstring. Not news of uh, that AJ Brown because uh, he was drafted as uh, as a first receiver on somebody's team fantasy team. So you don't like hearing that AJ Brown's out. Um, what does this mean for the offense and uh, who's the next man up, so to speak? Yeah, you have to hear about hamstring injuries. I mean, they're you know every week it'll be uh, it'll be a pain for fantasy lineups to deal with. But if you look at the Titans' schedule, you know they get the Jets next week and they follow that up with Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm. I mean, they're easy matchups for for the offense, and they can just ride Henry and hopefully Julio Jones is uh, is okay and he'll be the main target there. Um, and he should have a much higher floor now there um, in those matchups without Braun. Hopefully Braun can get back to the week six when they face the Bills or week seven when they take on the Chiefs. And they're going to need to keep up with those high-powered offenses. So maybe they get a chance to so-called rest them for a couple weeks uh, mm-hmm. when they may not need them. So hopefully it works out. But I think you're going to see a lot of Derrick Henry in the next couple weeks. Yeah, well, as we do, and uh, that uh, and that doesn't hurt any – that doesn't hurt anything if Derrick Henry is uh, is running. Who actually uh, this week he didn't have uh, too big of a too big of a game. He was uh, not not as he still he still went over 100 yards, but he wasn't as big as uh, wasn't as big as the previous week. 183, I think it was. But he's he's still on. It's he's pretty still, sad when you think about it. It's 100 yards, and you think that's a bad week for Henry. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yes. You know it, I mean? it is. So, that's where we're yeah. at. But uh, I think expecting so much out of him every week. But just getting back to Brown. Uh, uh, like um, uh, this will probably come up is is in waivers is like Chester Rogers is the next guy up and uh, of course uh, Julio Jones maybe uh, gets a gets a bump out of this right right I would think so yeah yeah he'll be the main target there I don't see any. and they got a bunch of uh, players that uh, receivers that are not script right now that I wouldn't bother even touching I'd either go with Julio and that's it. Yeah, well, there's there's another outsider that we'll talk about later. Um, <laughs> this is this is one, and this is kind of an ongoing joke, but I gotta mention him because uh, he's Kevin and uh, Jono's favorite, uh, Jonathan Chan and Kevin <laughs> Wall. They, they like Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon is. Oh, no, they love Josh Gordon. <laughs> they love Josh Gordon. They live for Josh Gordon. He's their good luck charm. They 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 sort of like they gotta have him on their team. And Kevin picked him up <laughs> just to have him in there for. You know, for lucky charms, I guess. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so it was uh, kind of <laughs> kind of strange, but he picked him up. Um, obviously, I mean, he's only on the practice squad of the Chiefs. So yeah, um, if uh, if he's your good luck charm, that's about all he is, isn't he, uh, Dennis? He's, that's about all yeah. worth is. Yeah, I'm surprised we're doing this again. I mean, you know, he's been suspended like six times right now. I think by the NFL, and you know, I mean, he was he had a great year with the Browns that one year, but he hasn't done much since. Um, and you know, now that he's with Kansas City. You know, people are going to be jumping all over him to get him. And I don't know how sure you could trust him to do anything, but the potential is there. And if he's his head straight and he acts right, I mean, he could be a fantastic asset, but I don't know how much of a chance you could take on him. Um, you're hoping that he does, does everything right and gets to that point. I don't know. I mean, he's had how many chances already he hasn't done it. So I don't right. see it happening again. Uh, finally, James White. Uh, James White suffered a hip uh, subluxation. I don't know what that is. Subluxation in week three and is quote unquote out indefinitely. Out indefinitely, according to NFL Network. Ian Rappaport. Um, yeah, uh, uh, James White is. I still don't think he's quite an afterthought. 
in the uh, offense of the Patriots, but he sort of is now. But I, I, it's it's not a big loss if if you've lost James. White. Yeah, I don't think so either. I mean, he was making somewhat impact. You know, I mean, he was kind of Matt Jones' outlet, but um, it kind of made Brandon Bolton a fantasy thing again by having him out there. Which you know, you only see him on special teams, but he's made an appearance in the backfield uh, on Sunday when White went down. So. I think you may see the rookie Stevenson uh, get activated after being deactivated in the last couple of weeks. So we'll see him uh, shine along with Damon Harris. He said, I don't think it's that much of an impact. I think those two will, will ride the, be the running backs to get. Yep. And uh, not, so not much, else, not much else there. Okay, time for moving on up. And uh, moving on up for me um, is Brandon Cooks, Houston. Um, you know, if there was one player that is actually making a, an impact on the team, and that that is clearly, clearly, clearly uh, Brandon Cooks. Uh, just looking at his, uh, just looking at his record so far in the season. I mean, he's he's been a first pager on the uh, on your fantasy uh, scoring. I mean, he's got 132 yards in uh, week one, 78 yards in a touchdown week two, and uh, a scoreless 112 yards in week three. Uh, I mean, I, I kind of, it, for me, before in, in drafting, uh, Brandon Cooks was an afterthought. Right now, uh, Dennis, he's the, he's the man in, uh, Houston. Yeah, I, I love to see Brandon Cooks, man. He's so underrated. I mean, he produces yep. numbers every year, regardless of the team. And even now, you know, with, I mean, he's had some, he played with some great quarterbacks, but this year he's playing a Texans team, you know, that had, of course, Taylor and now the rookie, uh, Davis Mills. Mills that yeah. he's still producing. I mean, he, look at his stats. I mean, he has, Two 100 yard games. He's had 23 reception and in the first three weeks. I mean, he's, I mean, he's, he's at every week, uh, wide receiver three, maybe wide receiver two, depending on the matchup. So, um, yeah, I love me some Brandon Cooks. Yep. Uh, who you got for uh, moving on up? Who's moving on up in your, yeah, I think we have to look at, uh, Emmanuel Sanders from Buffalo. I mean, he's had the best game of the season, uh, on Sunday, five, Five uh, passes caught and six targets for 94 yards and two touchdowns. And that Bill's offense remains pass heavy. And he has emerged as a reliable target for Josh Allen. Yep. So I think he's a definite must add this week. Targets are eight, six, and six, uh, respectively, in each week. And of course, uh, he was in the top four of uh, half PPR uh, wide receivers behind uh, Devontae Adams and ahead of Justin Jefferson. It's not going to happen every week, but uh, he's a little more trusted than uh, a lot of the other options uh, <laughs> than you would think. But, uh, I mean, even just Sean Jackson made the top 10. So these, these <laughs> veterans, <laughs> these veterans yeah. know, uh, they know how to get into the, uh, they know, to, they know how to get on the front page of fantasy scoring. So that, that's, right. that, that's pretty good. Um, time for the opposite side, the panic button. I'll start with you, Dennis. Uh, panic button for you. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm getting worried about Kenny and Drake for the Raiders. You know, I figured Drake would take over in the Raiders' backfield with Jacobs hurt, but it seems like a blast from the past. Peyton Barber came back to life and produced 142 total yards and a touchdown on Sunday. You know, Drake still has a pass catching role there, but I don't see him making a fancy impact this season, much as I. You know, I thought he would in that in that offense. Yeah, I, I thought so too. I thought he would have a bit more, and, I, and even in my uh, my blurb view, I kind of expected him to take up the slack and uh, and not the guy. I mean, I will I will uh, talk about Peyton Barber a little bit later after I talk about Ronald Jones, my guy, and uh, it appears that Jones is clearly in the doghouse, and he's, he is not getting out of the doghouse. And Giovanni Bernard is apparently, I think, he needs overtaken him in the depth chart there um he had that uh, fumble in week one and uh and he's he's still having troubles uh, uh picking up blitzes which does not please brady of course and uh brady has a lot of say and so he's not uh he's not flavor of the month in uh, tampa bay dennis no not at all i think you know he's so he's lost his confidence I and mean, the coaches have lost confidence in him as well and i think he's you know he's be riding the bench with you know geo taking over you know, third on row and Fournette, you know, being there, the run, uh, you know, the, in the twenties and, uh, short yardage uh, situations. So I think we can go away with, uh, um, getting rid of, uh, Ronald Jones. Yeah. Waivers. Time to get into waivers for, for people to pick up. And, you know, last week, um, I had Peyton Barber in this spot as the guy I wanted to talk about, but I was talking about him in a negative way. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> this week I'm talking about quick. <laughs> this week I was completely wrong folks completely wrong I hold my hand up I 
got it wrong. Uh, Peyton Barber is the guy to own while uh, Josh Jacobs is out. So he's the guy. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, I by all means pick up Peyton Barber um, because, as, as we just heard Dennis say, it's Kenyon Drake is not the next man up. It is Peyton Barber. And, you know, that's kind of weird because they, you know, they just, they basically picked up Peyton Barber off the street. And I thought this just, you know, this is just, uh, well, you know, like filling out the roster, sort of like back, you know, back right. up the roster. Insurance but, kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. And and, yeah, and right. so that's why I kind of had a negative take when last week. I mean, you, you thought it was kind of, you know, a natural <laughs> thing to be, be, but I'm sorry I went negative, folks, on, on Peyton Barber this week. He apparently is the right guy to pick up. And if he's still available, <laughs> Available, you should go get them. Right. Yeah, um, I was I was with you last week. I didn't. I would know. I wanted no part of Peyton Barber, and I was kind of laughing when I saw him. Uh, you know, score a touchdown, get over 100 yards. I'm like, where is this coming from? I mean, holy cow! You know, exactly. I mean, Gruden was committed to him. He was he had handling the ball off all game, and you know, I mean, if Jacobs out again, yeah, you gotta you gotta throw him in your flex maybe, or you know, it's he's getting the ball. You gotta you know put him out there. He's producing so. He's Never only. I would say that, but <laughs> well, a lot of a lot of people felt like us because he's still only eight percent right. owned in Yahoo, and like you say, one hundred and eleven yards, touchdown, five targets, thirty-one yards. <laughs> right. Who would have thought that? <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Number Definitely three, not us. That's for sure. <laughs> number three of the running backs uh, in week three. So, uh, can I say who you got, uh, Dennis? Who you want to talk about? Yeah, point that we mentioned uh, a little bit ago is uh, Giovanni Bernard. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was getting a lot of reps in the in the week three loss to the Rams. He had nine receptions for fifty one yards and a TD. I mean, that's the most he's played uh, so far this season. He's a decent option as a flex in PPR leagues, and it seems like he may go into a bigger role with Ronald Jones now in the doghouse. So I grab him off the waiver wire in PPR leagues. Yeah, uh, definitely had the. Uh... Where did he Where did he finish this week? I think he was on the front page too. Yeah, he was somewhere near the bottom of the top twenty-five, but he was like uh, inside the top twenty, definitely about the seventeen. Looks like um, he's questionable though. Yeah. Uh, he's got a questionable tag right now. He's got a a slight MCL sprain. Oh boy! Yeah, interesting. I didn't hear that. That's yeah, weird. so a little bit of caution there. So his status for week four at New England is uncertain. It says so. It says here Leonard Fournette would likely pick up extra pass game. Work. And this might this might even save uh, Ronald Jones's bacon a little bit. <laughs> maybe Unless so. I don't know, maybe. I, I, maybe they might they might bring along uh, Keyshawn Vaughn. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, true. So we'll see how far how deep he is in that doghouse. Um, if this you know yeah. what happens with him this week. So maybe he gets out of it. <laughs> we, we shall see. Let's let's hope uh, yeah. let's hope we're not wrong. <laughs> well, I'm not wrong because I'm the one that brought him up. You just agree this is uh, okay, Dennis. Let's move on to uh, who do you want to talk about in uh, well, wide receivers and the waivers? Yeah, I'm looking at uh, Tim Patrick of the Broncos. Mm-hmm. Um, they recorded five catches for 98 yards and five targets after scoring touchdowns in each of the first two weeks. He's now the Broncos number two with Jerry Judy out. And he should be on more fancy rosters, uh, especially with the plenty of injuries going around the league. Wide receiver, he should be rostered in all league. Yeah, I kind of thought KJ Hamler would be the guy. I mean, Cortland Sutton's always going to be there for as number one. But I'm kind of in. I, I mentioned this too in my uh, blurbs uh, this week. Is that um, I initially thought that Teddy Bridgewater was was a was game managing, but but it's not true. Uh, actually, um, Teddy Bridgewater is I think third for the amount for deep passes so he's actually you know he's getting out there he's trying to cook like uh you know like the big boys quarterback so yeah uh definitely yeah, he's stepped up this year it's good yeah. to see good story you know but you see that kj hammer's now out for the year so yeah um yeah so patrick will be definitely is uh, locked in as number two with him and sutton and you got fan at tight end I mean, that's pretty explosive op- offense there yeah yeah, who do you got a wide receiver? Uh, I have. Who do I have? Ah, I have Brian <laughs> Edwards. Brian Edwards of the uh, Los Angeles Raiders. I see him getting a lot of targets, and he's. Um, I think he's getting the better looks than the other guys like like Rugs. I think he. I think he's a better guy to have than Rugs at the moment. Um, Brian yeah, Edwards. He's yeah, he, he's he had a bit of a down week in week two, but in week three, um, eighty nine yards, scoreless. You eighty nine yards and a scoreless. He hasn't scored a touchdown at all this year, but eighty one yards, five targets. I mean, that's you know that's reasonable. Uh, 
WR3, 4 type production. I mean, better than that, right. really. So, uh, yeah, compared with Ruggs, it seems like um, Derek Carr wants to find him. I mean, Ruggs isn't too far behind. Ruggs um, has a touchdown. He, well, his big week was in week two, of course, 113 yards and a touchdown. Uh, but uh, he's he's not getting that many more targets. Seven targets, four catches, 78 yards this, this past week. So. Um, but Edwards is in there. Um, you can pick him up and, um, you can, I think he is a flexible, flexible guy. Well, absolutely. He is a big play threat in that, in that offense. I mean, the offense still keeps humming. So you gotta, you gotta get, get every piece of that pie you want to get. Yeah. Yep. My third guy, yeah. a bit of a, uh, uh, going into the tight ends, you know, uh, yeah. um, he finished number one and he's obviously, I guess, number one on the Minnesota Vikings. That's Tyler Conklin. Tyler Conklin got, uh, um, eight targets. Seven receptions, 70 yards, and a touchdown for the Viking. Um, he's going to be a hot pickup for those uh, looking for tight end. It could be a flash on pan just taking a look at his past week production. Four targets, four targets, and then, and of course, against Seattle, eight targets. Um, it, Dennis, is he growing into something, or is this just a flash in the pan? No, I think he's going to something. I mean, yeah, they lost Irv Smith for the season, so... Um, you know, Cochran was, uh, stepped up in a big way against Seattle. You know, Seattle's defense is, uh, pretty horrid, but I think he's definitely, uh, just solid, uh, streaming option go moving forward. Uh, especially at tight end, whereas, yeah, the, the pickings are very slim. How do you feel, uh, as far as Fab goes, uh, high, medium, or low? I go low. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't spend that much money on tight ends. I mean, those are a dime a dozen after that first, uh, the top guys, you just if you're gonna pick someone off the waiver where I want to spend it on tight end. Yeah, I'd say I, I I'd agree. Go low on your fab yeah. for him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got a I got a tight end that I'm probably gonna try to pick up in Lee's is uh Dawson Knox of Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Let me score a touchdown in the consecutive games and the Bills keep throwing at the one of the highest rates in the league. So as a streaming option, I definitely take a shot at uh Dawson Knox. Yeah, I like the, uh, I like Jocelyn Knox for the season. Um, he came out, scored well, uh, like you say, five targets, uh, four receptions, uh, 49 yards and a touchdown. And that's kind of what you want with your, your, uh, tight ends. That's what tight ends are for in fantasy, really. You just want that, you want those red zone looks. And, you know, Dawson Knox has, he's got one. And, uh, I mean, like guys like Mark Andrews, I mean, even though Mark Andrews got 109 yards, he still hasn't got a touchdown this year. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. I mean, uh, but I don't know. Right now, to me, the hottest tight end is, of course, Bronkowski. So right. Glad to say that uh, <laughs> this week is Sunday Night Football, and he's going to – I can't wait to see that <laughs> he's going to get a massive cheer. I mean, the the old Patriots are actually on the Tampa Bay Bar- Who did? I mean, if you're in New England, who do you cheer for? I mean, like <laughs> – Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Well, he's yeah, – him and uh, – Crack and British to get huge ovations, and deservedly so. Yeah. Um, but I can, ma- I can, I can imagine Brady wanting to stick it really bad to Belichick, so. Oh, uh, it you know is. I mean? Yeah. He's going to get, he's going to get the passing record. He's going to throw, he's not going to, he's going to pile it on the Belichick's, you know, brilliant mind defense. You know, he's just going to keep piling it on him. And I wouldn't be surprised if he throws for four or five touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either. Rub it in his face. Because yeah. uh, how far off is he from Breeze? He's not too far from Breeze now, right? No, I mean, it's less, he, maybe a he, hundred uh, yards or something. Right. I think maybe something like that. Less than a hundred. I know he just went yeah, over. We'll definitely get it. He just went over 80,000, which is cheap. But yeah, yeah, second highest. So yeah, he'll pass Breeze this weekend in New England, which I guess is kind of appropriate. <laughs> yeah, it is. Right in Belichick's face, too. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yeah. If we're picking up guys, Dennis, we got to drop somebody. Who are you going to drop? Yeah, I, so one of the guys, uh, the guy I chose is one of my, uh, preseason favorites. And I hate to say this, but I'm going to drop LaVisca Chenault. I, I thought he would be something this season. Uh, but he continues to disappoint. And, um, on Sunday, he caught four patches for 48 yards. And, um, you know, his upside is capped by, uh, you know, the other, uh, pass, uh, receivers there, DJ Chark and Marvin Jones commanding volume. And I think he's um, he's someone you can drop. I don't think he's going to be what we thought he was going to be. Uh, I, yeah, where did he end up? 
Well, you got, uh, yeah, 48 yards. It was, it was actually had negative yardage in week two. And, uh, yeah, he came out, uh, yeah. Uh, tough game against Arizona, though. I mean, it has to be said, but, uh, um, me, I, I don't know. If I had a worse guy, I think I might hang on to Chenault, maybe, myself. Uh, uh, but I don't, st- I don't strenuously disagree with you, but, uh, uh slightly, can I put it that way? I would, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought would, he'd be something, but. Yeah, I don't think Marvin he's. Marvin Jones stepped up, and, you know, DJ Chark's, you know, um, pretty, he's pretty good. But, you know, that offense, Trevor Lawrence is hit or miss. I mean, he's experiencing a lot of growing pains right now, so, uh, um, um, and Urban Meyer, it doesn't seem like he's, uh, knows what he's doing sometimes. I hate to say being a Buckeye guy, but uh, yeah, he yeah, scares me. Chenault to me is, is, is kind of like the Debo Samuel type. Yeah, true. I agree with that. So, yeah. Uh, so that's why I'd be hard, hard pressed to drop him, but I don't disagree with the, the sentiment in, in the, in, in the, in terms of production. It's not been there. And uh, whether that has something to do with, uh, I mean, Shark's still the, the number one goat guy, but. Eh, it is what it is. Um, my uh, drop, time for my drop guy. Uh, I'm going to drop Jameson Crowder. Now, I know that Jameson Crowder <laughs> hasn't played. I know he's still waiting for his first game of the season, but even before he gets on the field, I'm going to suggest that you can drop him because of the way the Jets are going and Zach Wilson isn't finding anybody. And and, and if he gets, even if he does get back, you got, got guys like Braxton Barrios are probably better than, will probably get better production than Jamison Crowder. If you've got, if you've been stashing Jamison Crowder, you don't need to stash him anymore. You can drop him and get somebody else. I know, I don't know how you feel about this, Dennis. I mean, a guy hasn't even had a chance, but I don't think yeah. uh, i don't think i really need to see it <laughs> but yeah I, I would i have no qualms about uh dropping crowder i mean i think he's still recovering from covid and i'm not sure where he fits in that offense right now uh, but struggling wilson's struggling um i don't see much upside uh, with crowder so he's definitely worth the drop yep uh, i can definitely drop him up uh let's move to our final segment this guy some guys that are barely on the radar the spec ads so these are guys that uh, you want to play the lottery, fantasy lottery. Uh, oh, by the way, I played the fantasy lottery uh, this weekend. I picked up Jake Funk. What do you think of that? <laughs> Jake Funk. Yeah, you never know. I mean, I heard the Henderson maybe uh, Drew Henderson might be playing this week. Their prom. Well, it looks promising that he plays this week. So, but Michelle looked um, good. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I was surprised. I think I, mean, I think I think Funk only got on there for one carry, but he, he it was six yards that he got a carry for. But the rest was all Michelle. Yeah. But and and yeah. you say did you just say that uh, that Henderson's back? Is he? Well, supposedly, yeah. They're, they're just promising that he'll be back this week, so we'll see. All right, but yeah, it's too early to tell now, but we'll see. Okay. Anyways, let's uh, get into real spec ads, guys. That uh, and who's your lottery ticket? Right, I'm going to take a shot, even though it's a really, yeah, I just mentioned how struggling of an offense it is, but I'm going to go with Michael Carter of the Jets. Um, I like it. The running back, yeah, the rookie, he led out running backs and touches, the Jets running backs and touches. He didn't produce much, but I think it's worth the roster stash with hope that he takes over that backfield and um, you know, gets a short yardage and potentially more in that offense. I'm just going to check to see how uh, how much owned is Michael Carter uh, in the uh, in the scheme of things. He is. Uh, let's see. I'll have to click on to find out. He is 56 percent owned. Oh, not that deep. Not that deep. Deep. Um, he's. Uh, this is on Yahoo. I'm going by. Um, yeah. N- week three, nine attempts for 24 yards. I think he can't take. I mean, Tevin Coleman isn't doing anything, is he? No. Nobody has really that offense, but no. I think I'd take a shot with him, throw him at you know on your bench, and see what happens. You know exactly. I, I would, I would definitely say so. Um, what do you got? I am going to go with a guy. He's actually in the waiver list of the uh, Fantasy Pros uh, waiver list. Which, uh, if you're listening to the podcast, I always post the uh, the list of the um, starting players. Of uh, uh, pardon me, uh, what do what's the proper word I'm looking for, Dennis? The uh, anyways. I'm not sure. <laughs> hey, I'm not sure either. Um, but anyways, the guy I'm looking at is, uh, um, well, he's not really a replacement for, uh, uh, I've lost the podcast. Uh, ah, here we go. Yeah, uh, Nick Westbrook Akeen. Um, he's 14th wide receiver on the Fantasy Pros list of guys to pick up. And uh, I consider him kind of an outsider um, just to see what he got. Um, I'm not sure. When did... Uh, when uh, at what point in the game was it? Was it the first quarter that uh, AJ Brown left the game? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, yeah it was well, very early. 
Well, this guy got four targets, 53 yards, and he scored uh, against yeah. the Colts. So eh, I kind of like him as an outside as an outside shot. I mean, he went up to uh, four targets, so that's uh, that's four of four, uh, four targets, four receptions. I might add. So um, I think um, if you have room, or if you are so inclined to pick up a lottery ticket, I think Nick Westbrook Akeen is a guy who uh, consider. I don't know what you think, Dennis. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a worth a speculative ad. You never know. And two releases and if it doesn't pan out he's the easy drop as well so i mean it doesn't hurt you if you got no. some wasted uh wasted space at the end of your, end of your bench then that's worth a shot okay so we're uh nearly at the end of the show we've been running through this uh week uh, very quickly we've got lots of we've got a bit of time left uh dennis with the podcast is there anything else you want to add to this uh to the discussion is something something that uh fantasy related that we maybe we've overlooked well, do you I'll give you a minute somewhat to think fantasy about related it. but did you uh you're a, you're a Green Bay Packers fan, correct? Yep. If I remember right. Yep. As you, what do you think of the this comeback by by Rodgers? Um, I expected it. <laughs> yeah, <so laughs> he always. <laughs> t- <laughs> there was plenty of time left. He's uh, he's like Brady. He does it uh, every time. Frustrated those uh, 49ers. Um, I'm also a pa- I'm also a Seahawks fan because I moved. When I was little, because you know, you know, you so you know, you you don't really, I don't know. It's kind of hard to switch teams, but uh, they're both my favorite teams because when we moved to the coast, they were the only team. That, uh, well, the Seahawks didn't start. I'm giving away my age. The Seahawks didn't start up until 1975. So, so I'm a fan of both teams. But anyway, yeah, I'm uh, quite happy about the Green Bay uh, comeback, and I'm I'm actually happy for Rodgers because he's you know he's showing up. Uh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. you, you got to be happy about to. the Browns. The Browns are, uh, you know, the Browns look solid. They're going to be in the playoffs, yeah. I think. I don't want to jinx yeah, I think it. so, too. Yeah, yeah, don't jinx that, please. <laughs> yeah, you know, one thing I noticed about the, I don't know if we watched, uh, well, I know you probably watched the game, but, you know, Devontae Adams, it seemed like he had a really quick recovery from that, that massive hit that he took. Yes. Um, I mean, he looked like he was out on the ground. You know, he comes back in after, like, a, a play or two. Yeah. And he's right back out there. I I didn't get that. I mean, the way the NFL deals with concussions, I I would I didn't think he'd be back the rest of the game, and he came back um, you know, within a couple of plays, which just kind of makes me wonder what what happened exactly. But um, yeah, I just I mean, he made a lot of good plays at the end too. So like he always does. Flat you know, out. It just seems kind of odd. Just like those old films of Joe Cap. Joe Cap got laid out. Joe Cap. Yeah, Joe Cap. This is going back to 1969, like in those old, the old films, you know, with the that the the old uh, NFL uh, NFL films music, you know. There's there's Joe Cap. Joe Cap was a, quite a big star back in the day. But but you see him, he, you know, concussions. You know, you get your ball. They used to say. Um, I remember back in the day, like before concussions were a thing. Oh, he got his bell rung. He'll be back out there, you know. Right. Totally you know. Right. That was sort of the word that got his bell rung. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they were back out there, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They totally out. Yeah. But as it turns out, as we find out that over the years, those those head injuries, obviously, um, you know, didn't didn't look well for players uh, as years grew on. And I think that's kind of where we got our, uh, why we have the concussion protocols, because, well, all the data is in from those players from the old days and, and, and their conditions, like, uh, like some, <clears throat> I mean, some came out better than others, but on the whole, uh, it kind of makes sense to look at concussion protocols. I don't know. Some of the, some of the other stuff is is kind of hard on defenses, like like with the quarterback. I don't know how you feel about the quarterback rules, but uh, oh, they're like, they're like, they're like golden childs out there. You can't touch him. You can't do this. You can't do that. Like the defense is you know, behind. Uh, they can't do anything. You know, it's ridiculous. You know, there's like receivers. You can't touch a receiver until you bumped him a little bit. It's uh, it's a flag right away, and yeah. it does it makes it very. Uh, was very weak out there, you know. Yeah, and but. sometimes they don't even hold to the rules because I mean I've seen clear helmet to helmet contacts and stuff, and it gets right. missed. And yeah. yeah, even like the one that Adams got hit on, he got it was helmet to helmet. The referee was in the wrong spot, didn't see it, but you can see the hit. I mean, the hit was enormous, you know. And he got it right in the head. It looked like he was out. I mean, he was out cold, and they got him up, and you know, he came back to play right away. But um, yeah, in I mean, fairness, if the, the if the ref don't catch it and it's kind of blatant, they'll. Like after the game, they might uh, assess a fine or something like that. Yeah, probably true. It's sometimes, true. sometimes you see that if it's it looked like really outside thing. But some guys are like taking advantage of the rule, like quarterbacks too, like to take advantage of the rules. Like they'll just sort of accidentally on purpose get in the way of the of the defender who's sort 
of just uh, winding down as he runs off the sidelines, and he just gets accidentally on purpose hit. I forget which quarterback right. uh, like uh, played that up, and they talked about it too in the uh, commentary. Yeah, mm, rules. Eh. Yeah, um, it's, it's scary. Yeah, I, mean, I saw. Uh, I was watching the uh, in between watching the Browns watching the Steelers and Bengals game, and Big Ben does not look good. Jesus, he looks he's looking his uh, he's on his last legs out there. So that about wraps it up for our week four uh, Fantasy Edge podcast. I want to thank everybody for uh, coming to the enormous a lot of visitors to the Fantasy Edge uh, page where we uh, where we put it. Uh, like uh, quite thankful to everybody who's doing that. And, uh, and uh, one more time as uh, as we sign off, uh, Dennis, uh, to, uh, all our best and God bless you, uh, uh, Mike Taglier. Uh, you rest well, my friend. Yes, sir. Rest in peace, thanks. Good night, everybody. Good night.